I, I believe we don't have a, a formal um, written agenda, but uh, I'd like to call this special meeting of the Board of Public Works to order. And um, first on our agenda, uh, as it exists in our minds, and the only thing on our agenda is uh, to review uh, and discuss the um, proposed new scope of work on the option step. Uh, and uh, we have with us James Lorilla, the chief architect and author of this proposed new scope of work. You know, it is an insult to call an engineer an architect. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> As I said, the chief engineer. Do you guys plan that little routine just to wake us up? Um, and so first I, I, I would just like to congratulate Jim on a, a great job. I think he, he clearly put a lot of time into this. Um, it's well thought out. Um, but Jim, do you want to just kind of lead us through quickly? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to print it in most of But I did glance at it. I couldn't really it. Did you all have a chance to read it? Sure. It's not plugged in. Not on. Huh? Yeah, no. That's what Ned says. Okay, it's running. It's I... magical electricity. <laughs> I can turn the heat down if you like, Rob. Well, what about No, I like else? this. You like that? This is working well, fine. Well, <laughs> 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 He's complaining He's about the cold that we're working yeah. in today. Where have you been? <laughs> Uh, no, I've been back for a week. I, I'm at home. Right, right. Physically. Um, yeah. So you usually wear like long sleeves and sweater and everything. Uh, I just talked to my wife on the way over. She's on her way to go snorkeling. There's a part of the island where the reef comes in like this close to the shore. You can just step out, flop on your face, and they're little fish. So that's what she's up to this morning. Well, since she helped us out of Florence the Park, she's there in fish. <clears throat> Can I ask a general question while we're waiting? Is this budget a time and materials or oh, yes. okay. so if we don't do certain things then it won't we won't be charged. That's correct. Um what I did is uh I went back to HDR after taking notes here at the, at the board meetings and at the public forum and tried to get out of them in Stantec um, some additional scope items that would sort of fill in um, some of the gaps that exist in the current scope of work that we asked them to do. So what I have, uh, what they've provided is sort of a laundry list of, uh, of additional work, which I think a lot of it is more peripheral to the to the main focus of the study, but provides background and other information um, relevant for solid waste management in, in the region. Um, some of the fees, all of uh, HDR was saying that um, the fees would be time and expense. Um, some of them are they're high budget estimates because they weren't sure exactly what we we're going to task them to do. Um, so the way I was looking at this is I figured the board would discuss this today and then we'd figure out which tasks we wanted to proceed with in full or in part, and then I would go back to HDR and negotiate uh, fees with them. I will say that I've asked, uh, I asked them for uh, their billing rates, and their billing rates are some of the highest that I've seen in the industry, and I think that accounts in part for, for some of the uh, fees being as high, the estimated fees being as high as they are. Uh, so I can uh, just Give you a quick overview of the tasks, and then we can just go through them one by one. And if you want to do that, we'll be able to. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. You just, just quickly, just to okay. bring out the highlights. Um, the first task is related to providing additional information on um, the the waste shed in the area and the you know, character, you know, a waste information or waste quantity and characterization. The task is broken down into two parts. One of them is providing a summary of waste characterization, which is basically waste composition, what's what's in our trash. The first part of that task would be to do it using published information through 
waste characterization studies that have done for other communities, or um, on there are national scale studies that are done as well. And that's again to provide some background information on you know what what is the waste that we're generating and and what are what are the percentages and quantities. The second part of that task is related to um, sort of an optional waste composition analysis, which would actually involve uh, sampling uh, garbage bags at the landfill and opening them up and, and weighing different parts of the waste stream into predetermined categories. So we'd have actual waste composition information for our own, uh, for the waste going in the landfill. Um, the next task, task two, is related to refining waste collection information that we have. Um, we've provided HDR and Stantec information about um, the number of vehicle permits and things that we have. So we have provided them with estimates on, on usage in terms of what percentage of the community uh, you know, uses the drop-off centers versus what percentage of the community uh, relies on curbside collection. And there are some, they feel there are some limitations and shortcomings in that. They feel like there's a lack of data because there may be some overlap in terms of people that are curbside and still use drop off and, and that sort of thing. So, what, what they were proposing was a web based survey to get more information from residents in terms of uh, data on who uses both, um, how, how frequently people use one of the drop offs, which drop off they use, um, and that sort of information. Um, I guess I'll editorialize as I go. I don't, I don't feel like this is a this task is really calling out in terms of us needing to do it. I feel like we've got pretty decent um, data based on analysis that we have. Um, the Karen's provided them already uh, in terms of the, the number of vehicles that we have. I think the way we're looking at this is, what, you know, ultimately we're going to we're, we've got financial models and um, the work that they're doing to do a com comparative analysis between options, and even if there are some some shortcomings in this waste collection data we have. It's not really going to sway our ultimate decision. Right. So I'll, I'll keep moving, but that's my, my two cents on that. Um, task three, they're calling recycling and zero waste. And this, this really, I think, gets to the heart of some of the additional things that we're interested in, which, uh, which would include um, an evaluation of, of the landfill site in terms of materials that we're already diverting and materials that we could potentially divert in this sort of resource recovery park mode that was discussed at the last public forum. So um, the focus of that is resource recovery park uh, potential expansions for different materials, um, development of a zero waste initiative for the city and what that would entail and what the obligations might be for something like that. Um, a discussion of potential modifications to the city's <clears throat> page ecosystem. It's kind of important in considering, you know, we, we've had some uh, meetings in, in the past about going to a, a bag system versus a sticker system, and this would evaluate, um, would evaluate that. Uh, they also would, in addition to page ago, they discuss other economic drivers that were used elsewhere to, to increase waste diversion, so other, other means of Providing economic incentives or disincentives for people to, to recycle or not generate as much waste. Um, and <coughs> the other thing that they had in here was um, also looking at uh, organics diversion and some type of in vessel type composting system, probably an uh, anaerobic uh, type system to handle organics. There seems to be a lot of interest in that, and that was added to this task. Mm -hmm. Do you want to ask questions as we go along or can? Why don't I just go through quickly and then we can discuss okay. each task? Because we're going to wind up going through it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, task four is um, emerging and waste processing technology options. This would be a brief section where they would provide an up to the minute update on the different processing technologies that are uh, they're either in use or in study. Um, across the world, basically, they've done a lot of research in this area, <coughs> and they propose, they, they, this task proposes to uh, provide a summary of those and some of the costs associated with that. Um, task five, project financing issues, um, would basically involve um, redoing, oh, I'm sorry, would, uh, financing issues would discuss uh, different alternatives <coughs> for financing the project um, in terms of uh, implementation, Alternative delivery systems, financing options, public-private partnerships, 
um, design, build, those, those sorts of things. Um, task six is the economic assessment of options. Um, these options have basically already, uh, they're in the process of being uh, analyzed under a current contract. So what this task is basically is to revise economic assessments that are already under scope to address information that may have come out from the tasks that I just went through. So if some of the assumptions change or we get some information that impacts economic options, then they would go back and revise those. Uh, task seven is uh, participation in meetings and forums. Task eight is preparation of the, of the study report. So and then, um, they have an optional task in here. Um, which is related to assessment of carbon footprint for different solid waste management options. They didn't actually put a price on it. Um, they have experience in that uh, area of um, working with an EPA model that's available. And I believe they've also been working on the development of their own model with the Solid Waste Association of North America. This is my, my recollection on that. They did a presentation recently. Um, I received some comments. I talked to Gary um, last night. He was quite apologetic about, about not being able to be here today. He gave me a few of his comments, and I uh, received an email from the MJS one. So, okay. This is as we go through the tasks, I can let you know what they were. Yeah, okay. Good. All right. Well, uh, it's time for some open discussion on this. Okay, you're welcome to sit up at the table if you want. Yeah, sure. Let's sit down. Okay. So, Susan, do you have something you want to start off with? I have a first okay, question for Karen. Yeah, sure. So, Karen, under task one, um, can you speak to the amount or availability of literature that might help us um, identify typical um, Quantity and characterization that will, is already existing in the literature. EPA has a lot of waste characterization studies, and um, in California they've done quite a few. I think the, the challenge is finding a comparable community um, because you know, California, where they have a lot more green waste than we have, and you know, there's just um, some major differences. And, and well, and Massachusetts has some, some information as well. Are but you saying that you think that's accurate? I, I think it will give us a good enough idea of what we have, and also, um, you know, a, a full blown waste characterization is, is a very expensive proposition. And, and I've done a lot of visual audits where you can have, you can have somebody standing out there. So some period of time and making pretty accurate um, assessments of how, <coughs> how how comparable you know some of these other waste studies are. I, that's my own um, feeling that it, you know, spending that much money um, and resources mm. to get that information over. I have. Uh, I talked to HDR about this task. I felt like the fee ended up ten thousand dollars a for this for this task. And the way they had written it was they were, they were going to compare the city to some national in two thousand seven and EPA came out with a, every couple of years to a waste characterization study, nationwide. And it's based more on a, on production rather than disposal. So it's a different, slightly different type of analysis, but it's commonly used uh, by communities to get a sense of you know, what it was that they were generating. The other thing that they said they were going to do was compare um, the city's waste to waste from in, in California, as Karen mentioned. Um, some of this Cal California Integrated Waste Management Board, the data is right on it's on websites and stuff, so you can download it. And I couldn't really, I have a hard time justifying ten thousand dollars to take. You know, basically, it's uh, you've got a list of categories and percentages of the types of waste, and then you apply it to the quantity of waste that you have. It's sort of a multiplication type thing, and you say, well, this is about what people generate on average. You know, and, and more or less, you know, it's it'll give you a general sense of what, uh, you know, what what type of products or, or waste uh, materials are being generated, and it will help you get your arms around it. Won't be specifically, you know, accurate 
um, to Northampton, particularly as Karen mentioned, start talking about regional differences in ways and climate conditions and other things. It'll give you a, it'll give you a basic understanding. I wanted this task in there just so we could have a discussion because some 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 board members and members of the public have had questions about well, what exactly is in our waste and what is it that we're trying to manage? Typically, the waste characterization studies are done as a way of um, usually the information is used to design process. So if you're going to have a composting facility, you want to know how much compostable material is in your waste stream, whether it's paper or food waste or you know other types of organics. You want to know so you can design a process and size it. Or if you're developing a landfill, sometimes you know that type of information is useful. But you know it's a lot of money for information that's probably not going to be you know very specific to our situation. And um, Gary, Gary said last night, and we couldn't see the benefit of spending the money on this particular task. And I told them that, you know, we could staff could write a memo on on this information that was presented to the board um, using published data if you wanted to have some information without being able to spend the amount of dollars on it. Um, the other thing I was looking into, and Karen, Karen probably knows, she may know more about this than I but probably close to 15 years, 15 years ago or so, um, when I was at CDM, they were doing a study for this Eastern Hampshire refuse. There was a Eastern Hampshire Solid Waste Management District where they were looking at uh, different types of options for waste for waste management. I think at one point they were, they were looking at endless composting as an option. But I'm pretty sure they did a they did a, an actual waste characterization study for this part of the state. You know, granted it's old, but I take an old characterization study. You know, consider that to be as accurate as taking a national study. So. Um, I've made a couple of calls trying to pick up a copy of that so we can at least have that information. Yeah. Um, well, I'm happy that you say that that staff could do it because my thought was maybe this was because staff didn't have time to do that kind of work. And I know that there is some stuff out there. So if staff did have time and, and could be a budget could absorb that time, that would be really terrific. And I, I guess my, my questions are particularly to, out of all the research that's out there, the whole idea of this is to help the board to make a good decision. And so we would want to know information related to season. We want to know information related to, um, you know, geography, our area of the country. But we'd also want to know about size of communities. Because mm -hmm. if so much of recycling response seems to depend on the size of community, not only in terms of financial resources, but also in terms of um, uh, uh, that uh, break-even amount of, of compost that's coming in. Yeah, I think the problem is that the, the, the um, any studies that are done typically are done for communities my size. Are done? They're not. They're, they're not. Usually, yeah, usually okay. they're done for larger, yeah. you know, districts or, or cities. Um, one thing that we had talked about was on the organic side is the state has the state has done organics. Put on organic situation and that's what they call it. This information that's been happening. But they, they came up with a uh, you know a report a few years ago that put the lights on information uh, on the organic density generation. So there's some you know, some information that's in there. I'm trying to remember why we originally felt this was so important. I remember it wasn't in and then we decided it'd be a good thing to put in was because we wanted to really assess what we need beyond the kind of uh, zero waste stuff, what we need in terms of... Yeah, I have a question like about that. Mm -hmm. I, in the forum, I thought people wanted more information about commercial versus residential, you know, classifying the waste by generator mm -hmm. rather than by... Yeah. I my in, my impression was that's the case, and also they wanted to know where it was coming from. A difficult information to get at, but they wanted to know the extent of the waste shed. Uh, this, that's, that's, that's what, what it does. Mm -hmm. it does. Where it comes from? Like when you find out. Study of the How literature. Much is from no, it's it's two. It's it, it's where the waste is coming from. It's the division of the eighty percent, as Karen mentioned, because that's sort of a you know an outstanding question. Of, well, where is the waste coming from, and then. So it's where is the waste coming from and what is it? Where is it? Yeah. I, I actually, I, I really disagree. Um, they wanted to know is it coming from Chesterfield. It's, it's not in the literature. They wanted to know where is it coming from. Um, there was that, and then 
Yeah, that, but that's the question. Uh, I, think. And, and I, I think that's, that's the question what the public was asking. And that's the stuff that we no. say is commercial coming on its tail is not really from businesses and institutions. A lot of it is just, mm, right. you know, subscription haulers. And I think people want to know yeah. more of it. What that was about. Yeah, the, where the generators are and... Yeah, and that, that gets back to the question, and, and one of the issues that we've talked about is um, do we restrict in some way, or if we were to restrict in some way, the way shed, what impact would that have? That's what it was, because then we, would, we wouldn't be able to determine that if we didn't know right. what the way to determine is there a, Do you think that's a feasible task for them? This was, part of, this, this was part of the task. It is. Okay, it is? Yeah. All right. It's part of A. It's part of one. It's part of test. Okay. Uh, the goal that I, I got the eighty percent thing pretty pretty well. Um, the board the board members were also asking questions about waste characterization. That's why both of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And sure. and it gets to the when when you do this type of study, usually the first thing you do this is the task that you do. If you want to know what's your waste shed, what's the quantity material you handle, and what's it consistent, and then everything falls from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In our case, we haven't done that. We've worked at, we have a landfill, we've got a history of taking a certain amount of materials. So there's a certain amount of, well, we kind of know what we're dealing with here, and we're using, um, that you know, we're, and we're working with that, that type of information. But, you know, clearly, there's a desire to break the 80% down. Karen and I have talked about um, ways of trying to work with the haulers to get uh, information on whether the haulers are uh, get more specific. So, um, and that was, wasn't, they didn't labor on it here in the scope, mm -hmm. but they, they discussed kind of generation using some DEP reports. But more importantly, it's really working with uh, working with the haulers to figure out what the design. Okay, uh, through. Yeah, and so and that was exactly my question is because as as a, if we have to make a decision, I want to know. An eighty percent is a sizable amount of the, of the material coming in, and. If we know that 30% of it is food waste, then that's going to help us make a decision on where to, to push for for our solution. You know, or if, if you know if there's um, you know out of what they're bringing in, what's what's going into the landfill compared to what might also be appropriate for other uh, mechanisms. So the fact that you that that is something I just didn't get that from. The, from the description of the task. Yeah. Is this something that's realistic to in house? Well, the eighty percent breakdown number, we're probably better equipped to do it than they are. You know, I mean, they just don't. You know, we Karen knows the haulers, a big contact with the companies. Uh, to try to work with them, I think is something. You know, we're probably in the field with them on the one thing. Yeah, I, I would say yes, we can do it in house, but there might be a problem. With perception that mm -hmm. we're, you know, that we can't, can't analyze ourselves just because we might screw it somehow. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. I don't think that's true. Yeah. 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 I think you could, we can defend that. You're professional. Well, well it's also, like we're just trying to figure whole out. alternative study could have done, been done in-house, but it's better to have it done by a you know, profit coming out by hand you know, for, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, sure. All right, so what we really, uh, it seems to me what we have we need to do is make some decision, I suppose, task by task. Well, I, would, I would be in favor of not spending a penny of the initial amount. I, I can't see anything here that I would <laughs> that I would want to spend money on. So if this was up on a vote by vote, I would vote no on one. Uh, that, that, that doesn't. Do you want to clarify that though? Would you, yeah, would I you just, instruct I, staff? I have to tell you, this thing makes me so crabby. Uh. Um, <laughs> it, it's just a stunning amount of money. Oh, the money, yeah. For these vague, yeah. loosey goosey. Yeah. We're going to survey the literature. That's nine thousand bucks. <laughs> Karen, um, would you to clarify this? Would you uh, prefer that the staff tackle? 
what what we if you drill down into this, it seems to me what we really need is very concrete stuff. For example, Karen talking to the haulers. Right. Just you know, keep a running tally for a, a couple of weeks. Where did this truck come from? What was your pickup route? And they probably tell you. I just went through Williamsburg and uh, picked up five homes and three businesses. And yeah, just here that. I am. And 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 within two or three weeks, even if we hired some a, a temp, mm -hmm. uh, we could have. So my point is, if you drill down More into this and and wind the, and and like get down like what we really need mm -hmm. for decision making. It's, there's actually just a few specific things we need to know, I think, mm -hmm. to make good decisions on our own. Mm -hmm. okay. and and what they're doing in Palo Alto, I don't think, is one of those things we need to know about. The, the, just as an aside, the whole zero waste thing at the forum, I think, led us off in a slightly, a slightly off track. Mm -hmm. not, not a bad idea, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't actually have concrete ramifications for this expansion, I, I feel. It's... Okay. Well, that's, that's, okay. that's my feeling. It's, it's drawn us a little bit off of our immediate task. Okay, you wrote? I just directed something to what you said. Um, I don't completely disagree with you, but we have that big chunk of 11% coming from the 16 members that are contributing. We have 80%. What I would like to know is what those those you know, information about that. The value of some of the other waste characterization mm -hmm. studies is that it's a comparable thing. I wonder if we find out that that what we're doing, we're recycling a whole lot more than Palo Alto, for instance. And maybe we won't get that information, but it seems like that if it would take staff one day's time to summarize what's on the web for that, that information would be valuable to me. I think it's most important to know what we're doing here, but if I have some general waste characterization to not standardize, but base it against... Comparables. Yeah. I, I, would, I would like to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I need to excuse myself Okay. From those meetings. So. All right. Anything, any parting words? Um, I was thinking about what you were just talking about with the haulers, and you might be able to actually have the haulers carry a uh, clipboard type material with them and just jot down on the homes they picked up and approximate yardage it was mm -hmm. and okay. businesses on their daily routes because literally everything's on a weekly route or yeah. in the worst case bi-weekly um, twice or every other week excuse me so that might be a way of actually getting down that information you know as far as loose tonnage mm -hmm. yeah loose yardage coming in through the gate could offer them some kind of incentive mm -hmm. They might be willing to do it just yeah. for our sake. Okay. Uh, well, that's a good idea. And Karen has a good work relationship with yeah. the haulers, and it's just better than just providing us some information, not customer names, but where, you know, they, they did 15 homes in Chesterfield and 10 in Williamsburg and two in West Hampton, and they came to the landfill that day. And the next day, they, they had a different route, and they know where they're going every day, and that's mm -hmm. quantifying what they're picking up. Okay. That's, that's good. Well, we'll make the shortcomings yeah, and... We're, right now we're, we're in the, um, the, the lull of, of the waste stream mm -hmm. you know, through the end of February. So we're not going to get, get a snapshot, but it's not going to be completely typical. You know, yard waste. There's a, but not as much construction. <coughs> the economy is protecting the food. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, you know, I think it's, yeah, we can be working with the, the Callers, their roof sheets, and figure out you know some that's some of the waste that's constant, but there are other components that are going to be so different. But <coughs> we'll just have to um, adjust. Yeah. Okay. Well, does this need to be done to a certain I mean, is this really going to need to be taken to a certain I think it's. I think the plan was to jump on this right away. Yeah. No, but I mean, when we get all this back, are we really going to get it back in the spring? Yes. Well, we'll get it back quickly as compared to Especially if we some keep of our projects. getting rid of these tasks. You're right. Ro, did you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say, partly my, excuse me, answer, asked my question. My other part of that was like, if we were able to get a February assessment and then also a May, a May assessment, I don't know, you know, something that would be an addendum by the mm -hmm. time, because you never can really know. And sampling at two different times, though, is a good thing. Yeah.
Think about waste reduction. I think the two big things we can do that's left. First of all, we've done a tremendous amount. You know, as I said before the meeting began, we've done as much as the California communities aspire to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so so what's left are organics, in my mind, a big piece, and then just improve participation. And that gets to how do you get businesses and apartments and all of those folks to participate in the programs we already have. So I don't think that knowing the specific composition of the waste is going to help us drive for those two pieces. The organic piece, um, I bet we get just as good information out of what the state's done and a, and a couple other communities as doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. and I, so I, I think if we keep our eye on what are the, the big pieces that we can get to next and focus the program on that, I think we'd be better off. Okay. Good. Susan? Well, I think that's a pretty big assumption, and my concern is we spend a lot of money on, you know, a technology that we don't need, because, it, you know, we really need to spend a lot more money on education or, or reaching zero waste, because we don't know what, what people are turning out. I mean, really, I mean, how do we know that? I mean, maybe you do. I, I, I just don't know how we can know You know, is it, maybe it's all education. Maybe if we did have this big campaign for zero waste, we would be down to where we wouldn't need any other, you know, that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how do we become that? Okay. <coughs> All right, so relative to task one, uh, let's say they did give us uh, the breakdown. Uh, so much organic, so, yeah, I mean, this, let's say they give us a fairly specific breakdown, which probably would involve some of the <coughs> additional studies over on the right there. Um, what would we do with the information? We would then be able to assess how much we need to put into, I'm not saying they do it, but how much they put into, how much we put into a park, how much we put into technology for organic, how much we need to put into that. Because then we could be able to say, well, we really need X, Y, and Z, but we don't know that. We don't know what we need, really, in terms of, re you know, reducing the waste. Um, and, and what's going on? I mean, do we? I mean, I might be throwing out all, you know, my food stuff in there. And you don't know what's in that bag, even though I might be conscious. I mean, just, you know, I mean, I just have a hard time. We're basing, we're making decisions on huge assumptions. Well, it seems to me that whatever we do with organic, say, it's going to be fairly small scale to start with. It would have to be. I mean, it, that's not going to. Um, probably be a money generator, right? Yeah, I don't think we would do something if it was going to lose money. But it'll be a cost. I mean, would, so we would charge people to bring the organics? Right. We, had, we had looked at a, um, Karen had, had done a fair amount of work a couple of years ago looking at organics composting and, and developing a, a small scale, low technology windrow composting operation to sort of kickstart collection right. networks to try it out and then you know, once some of these collection networks were becoming reestablished, we would look at, you know, maybe doing something on a slightly larger scale using um, anaerobic digestion technology or something like that. But it would be a, you know, it's like you're saying, Terry, it starts small. Start small, and whatever we collect for would have to be distinctly less than what we would charge to just landfill it. Yeah, the incentive. So, I mean, there has to be some incentive built into it. So this is bound to be low revenue. More of an expense in the beginning than a, so, so. My point is that if we if we knew we have a bunch of organics coming in, 
whatever we do would have to be in addition to the expanding the landfill. It's not like we're going to say, all right, well, let's, for heaven's sake, let's skip the expansion, <coughs> and by golly, we're going to build a big organic plant instead. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I'm just trying to keep it all into, pers into perspective. And if we spend a ton of money figuring out that, yeah, we could start small and, and have a little low-income thing, but well, we almost know that already. The part of this always study originally was to try to figure out close the landfill open, you know, mm -hmm. expand the landfill, right. look at these, but, you know, like you're saying, Terry, looking at or organics management really is a subset of that, and if we were to do organics composting, you still need a, you still need a landfill, and you still need to hire your waste out yeah. of town, the balance of it, so, you know, in a way, that aspect of it, this other sort of resource recovery part, if you want to call it that aspect of it, is in a way, it's, it's peripheral to the main decision about, does this you want to expand the landfill? What are the costs that we want to haul our waste yeah. to What are the costs? It may affect the, the bottom line cost and the various options a little bit, a little bit, but not a huge amount. No, because it'll be across the board. Okay. I mean, if you're taking a certain percentage of the waste out, you're kind of posting it. Yeah. And that impacts every option. Right. Once we found out that there was hardly anything that really needed to go into a landfill, and that the solid waste or zero waste was the recovery part took care most of everything, and you said, well, Maybe we don't need to expand the landfill. It could go down to Springfield because it's only X amount. You know, I mean, I guess. I think we have that option anyway. That's How? By building it and then we can No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I think one option is that that's listed is you close, you close the landfill and you contract out to have the waste go someplace else. And so then... What the what this kind of study might get to, but I'm skeptical of, is is just sort of the quantity that goes someplace else. But the, there are commercial markets. There's a there's a marketplace for our trash if we decide to close our main. So I I don't I don't know that trying to use this study to to fine tune the quantity is going to help us make that decision any better. I think that that decision's on the table already. I mean, that option's on the table already. Mm -hmm. Because task six, conduct, conduct economic assessment yeah. of options yeah. is our main focus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But how do they do that if they don't know what the, what's there? Just That's the thing that I'm having a hard time. Right now, the landfill moves through the payment lieu of taxes and post community fee. <coughs> Three quarters of a million dollars to, into the city's pockets, uh, and presumably all of the people in the city pay a somewhat reduced fee for curb, having their trash picked up if they choose that option, because they only need to truck it a few miles over to the landfill. Um, so the way they look at that is like, okay, suppose we lose the payment load taxes, we lose the host community fee, and you pay a higher rate, presumably, to have your trash taken to Springfield from here in the campus. What would that look like? Well, that's going to cost approximately $2 million extra for every all of the houses in Northampton. So it's $2 million a year. There's the back of an envelope. That's the number. There's one option. It'll be $2 million versus three-quarters of a million. No, it's two million additional. Additional, so three million versus. This is the city's it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter how much you have because we started this recovery right. part and we don't have that much anymore. So it doesn't matter how much you have; we're just going to say it's X amount. The problem with all of these options is that I mean, I, I, I was interesting as in one of the forums. Someone said, you know, we the city should take all the money we get for trash and use it to build a resource recovery park. Doing that. We don't get money for trash. Yeah. We only get money if we have a landfill and the trucks pay us to drop the trash off. There is no money for trash that's sort of inherently funneled into the city. We're creating that by running this landfill. No, business. right. I don't know what's next that. So my, my point is that the organics, the resource recovery park, all of these little things are expensive. They're not... Yeah. And absent the landfill, there's no money for that, any of that stuff. It all goes away. It just becomes a straight straight out expense. You could have a re, re, um, 
recovery park without having, I mean, you have to be fees. It doesn't have to be necessarily. But am I right? It has to. It has to be. It has to be big scale. I mean, our little community. There has to be. I mean. There has to be an economy of scale. It has right. to be something like down in Springfield, where you're collecting your waste shed is huge, to make it a practical operation. Make it attractive to people to come. More than maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This state is a lot further along, I think, in some regard than California. I mean, when Gary List came to that meeting, he was asking me questions beforehand, like, you know, do we defer? It? You know, brick and concrete from the landfill, or does it all go in? Like, well, I, mean, I don't think we'll put a brick. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't think we'll put that type of waste in the landfill. You know, in 20 years in this state, and, and there's a lot of other things. Uh, leaf and yard waste composting, as an example, and metals. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that that we do that may not be, you know, that may not be done elsewhere. The state's been fairly progressive in pushing, you know, different types of diversion and trying to trying to enhance recycling statewide. You know, there was a big push of, of in the re recent past to divert um, construction demolition debris from landfills and development of you know recycling facilities for those. And you know, there's a lot that's being done in this state. I, I don't think that you know resource recovery park all of a sudden we're going to find that you know everything is going to disappear. Yeah. You know, if you look at de in detail what happens up at the landfill and all the different types of materials that we handle, you know, there's not going to be a lot. You know, the organics one is the is the easy one to get your arms around. There's not a lot of other things there that are going to make a whole heck of a lot of difference in terms of the amount of material that goes into the land. Yeah, that we can control mm -hmm. this little growth. Well, I just wanted to make this uh, concept, which is that, uh, well, part of it is that I also in between read the, the new solid waste proposal plan. And I am, I'm really impressed at how much we do do and compared, and I, I'll, I'll be interested if I have more about the literature because I don't think I know everything, but we do an awful lot, and I think so. It goes back to your original point about what different kind of education of people to know that we really are almost state of the art. Well, not completely, because there's some other things we can do that we haven't. The financial resources, I think, that might be a way of saying it to to do, and that that if we make this alternative study, we might get the financial resources to do some other things. But but we have we are doing a good job, but I think that there isn't that trust in our community that we are doing as much as can be done. And so it is there is an education component to this research and then the presentation of that. So it sounds like, so do we want to just take a minute break and uh, since we now have some members of the public here, just you know, solicit a few comments if we could. Jesus? Um, yeah, I actually specifically came because I was um, I was kind of concerned that the idea of addressing the 80% part and part of the information that was um, going to get lost, but I'm, I'm so glad that that's been brought up and that's, you know, part of the agenda. Um, I guess I wanted to say that if we do some of these things right, like let's say we have the composting thing, I mean, isn't there a market for fertilizer? Isn't, if we're... Huge. If we're... At this point, huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. Okay. I, I just want to finish. Um, there's still, I guess one of the things that should probably go in the study if we're talking about all of this other stuff like resource recovery and still using the landfill and, and all of this other stuff is that um, um, how much is the cost for the logistics of doing, you know, all of that. Like if we, we do decide to divert um, compost, there's going to be an additional cost for that. How is that going to happen? So. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're if that's pursuit, we need to know what the cost is for that. Yeah. Um, the additional thing is if we're going into that idea of making a business out of resource recovery or material recovery, um, we would have to, like for example, if we're doing the fertilizer, we can't just throw everything in there that's organic. There are you know some things that make better fertilizer than other things, and you probably want to have this dual organic stream, I guess, where you have those things that are really good for fertilizer and those things that are organic, but you don't want in the landfill, and you probably send that to an incinerator because it's safe to burn. Um, and then the other thing is, like, I just know, like, from being at the landfill that there's that giant pile of TVs and things like that there, and um, making, there was always this idea of, the, of a free store or a, that that's always been brought up, and that kind of stuff, um, if you make these things more accessible, then it, it's more likely to, and instead of paying people
people that, you know, take away TVs and take away things, if we, if we make it a point in a culture of recovering these things, we're going to find that there's a lot of use for these things. Like, I just remember, you know, going to the landfill and just taking a survey and looking at the and trash, and I'm like, oh, there's a waste bin thing that I could probably use. And Karen's like, well, go ahead and take it. I'm like, I don't want it. It's covered in garbage. And, I mean, these things don't have value if... That didn't really happen. <laughs> like these things, you know, don't have a value once they go into the landfill. They have a land. They have a value in their original form. You know, like Gary Lipton said, mm -hmm. before they actually enter the landfill. And the idea of putting together this resource recovery park and doing these other things is to try to get the value out of those materials that are coming in. You know, whether it's refurbishing them, reselling them, or doing something. And there might. I mean, I definitely having the landfill and having things centralized coming to us makes it a lot easier to do those things. And I don't know if there's really a way to have a landfill and then get a centralization of things that we could actually use and do stuff with and sell. But um, mm -hmm. maybe there is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to um. Yeah. I um. I'm concerned about the organic waste and see it as a valuable resource. At this moment in history, as we face a food crisis, people are beginning to garden. And, um, and soil is damaged everywhere. The need for compost is tremendous. We at Montview Neighborhood Farm receive all of the compost that uh, the pedal people pick up and find it highly valuable and um, we would like to see more operations throughout the city that receive compost and perhaps make it available to people. It would not have to be the city. We don't, there's no interaction with the city about this particular operation. I, I wash dishes at Sylvester's and uh, several times a day I heave out bags full of food waste and down in the prep cook area very very clean clean food waste so here's the concern I have and I'm just wondering that with the methane operation mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the city now prioritizes organic waste and sees it as um, a means of of uh, generating methane. And now, Karen, I did hear at the zero waste thing that you said, um, oh, there's no assurance of keeping compost clean. And later, I just got to thinking, gosh, maybe that's the city's take now, and that they want organic waste. They want it in order to produce methane. And I think that this places the city, if that is is an issue, it's it places the city in this competition between energy and food mm -hmm. <clears throat> and food production um, similar to um, the use of land to grow ethanol for fuel instead of using that um, agricultural land to grow food. This is really serious okay. and, um, and I want the city to prioritize okay. right. um, land use, you know, use of organic matter mm -hmm. for um, Nourishing soil. Yes, okay, so thanks. Great, great. Just as a point of clarification, the generation of energy and the anaerobic uh, digestion of our, you know, they're not really, they're not competing. They generate the gas and then you mm -hmm. still have the, you know, you have the compost byproduct that, that can be used to apply to anything. So, okay. you know, that, that method of dealing with the food waste organics is not, I don't think it necessarily is a competition with. It's just one price, it's just an anaerobic process versus an aerobic process. But it still results in a, in a good reusable material for gardens or farms. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We're, we're, we're a, a little short on time, so we'll, sure. we'll have to close the public comment sure. period. But thank you. I, I very mm -hmm. much appreciate your thoughts there. So okay. I have a comment that might move us along. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would like to, I don't want to see, to make the long story short, mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't think that we should be spending a lot of money on service. Mm -hmm. So I would not interested in. I would love it if somehow in house we could get the same results, including the particulars in the waste. That's all I can say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
Uh, that's pretty much what Gary told me last uh -huh. night. He said if there's a way we can get some of the information in house, I'll spend that time. Right yeah, now. If you'd yeah. like to yeah. do that, even if you But one other note, I had this is very minor, but that when the, the public were very concerned about what percentage of what the haulers are bringing in is has been separated. So I think that that's a piece of information where because that's eighty percent. That that might be an area of improvement. Are you talking about that it's been properly recycled and you know, this store separation of store recycling? Separation. Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, it, it's just a question. I'm not, it, you know, it's like, do they or don't they? Do they all? Do they not all? We, it's just a piece of information. But I think that's uh, a piece of information that's important. <coughs> okay, so. It seems the general consensus is that we should try to keep do this as much of this as we can in house, uh, and that if I could summarize, and that uh, assessment of the origin and versus quantities of the waste is especially important. Characterizing an additional eighty percent. Okay. And and just in passing, I, it seems to me that uh, there. There may be a role here for hiring some temporary people. I mean, it doesn't mean that in addition to everything else you do, suddenly you're spending days or weeks collecting data. I mean, compared to ten thousand dollars, if we spend a thousand dollars on temporary help, I, I suspect there'd be some support for that. And with the, with the data that we have in waste and uh, working with the haulers, I might need to get some computer. Um, assistance to you know, merge databases and things that are a little bit beyond my own. We can have temporary staff that won't take the cost for some of the Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. And maybe a study with Smith, an mm -hmm. engineering thing, so I did, you know, if they had me in the way, but Smith would help you as engineer, the engineering firm. Anyway, this is awesome. Okay. Uh, would you want to <coughs> want to move on to <coughs> task two? Yes. <coughs> task two is uh, again was related to that web-based survey to, to better clarify information about usage of the uh, the drop-off centers and and the determination of who's using mm -hmm. the site collection for their residential use. And as a and it was the um, estimate was fifteen thousand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so boy, I hate to be so negative, but I I really don't like this either. I think a web a web based thing is really skewed. It sounds so high tech and cool, and I think it's just a waste of fifteen thousand dollars. Let's split it eight ways here and. Go out to dinner. <laughs> I, I, it's just throwing money down the toilet. Or give ourselves raises. Hmm? Or give ourselves raises. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, percentage raises. Yeah. Uh, I, if, uh, but again, I have the same feeling, and also feeling like it's related to how do you can help. If if uh, if kids went around, uh, you know, knocking on doors and ask people mm -hmm. little samples. I, I mean, a, a, a statistician could probably tell you the best way to do it. I don't. To know that, but. Well, that's the thing that's a little disappointing to me in the, in the way the task was written because of a web based survey. And I think they, they have statisticians on staff at HDI, but you know, you're, you're limited to the responses to people that, that use the internet. And yeah. When you've seen the. You've seen, you know, but, but when I say a statistician, mm -hmm. I mean they could probably tell us if you visited, physically visited 300 houses. Or, or 200, or, or you know, there's some. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how to do that, but I know you can actually get mm -hmm. fairly good results. But this won't do it. No, I don't think so. It won't. No. It won't. It's not randomized, and you can't yeah. generalize to the population from what the information that you would get. Not, excuse me, no. so you, so you not could, to mention mm -hmm. that you don't have people, what, just what Jim said about you get lots of flack from the public because not everybody has. 
I think the key for me is that it, it's not going to change you know, the decision-making process. The information that's coming from this work won't impact you know, the economic analysis and the other analysis that's being done to the point where it's going to, it's going to change the decision. So if it's not really a factor, if it's not providing information on that level, you know, it becomes a need is questionable. Yeah. I mean, we know 100% of the people need to get rid of their trash. So there's one way or the other. There's a data point. Yeah. <laughs> Reliable. <coughs> Karen? Well, I, I just want to go back to, you know, where, where did this task come from? What information would you want to get out of this, uh, you know, from the form of where the board making a decision? Is there any... It seems to me that this came out of the whole thing of what if we had the city pay for trash pickup or something like that. But I, I mean, I don't, I mean, with then you go at it from a totally different, I I think the issue is, uh, uh, sort of the, the generation of this task, I think, evolved from. I had developed a, an outline of what I thought the study should include, and there was a section on waste collection. And, um, HDR actually came up with this approach to provide additional information, and, and the way that we're using this information ultimately is in the economic analysis. We've asked them to provide cost per household information. Now, the tricky thing in this city, because of the unique way that we collect trash, the cost per household varies significantly from my house, where I bring everything up to Locust Street here, or Terry's house where he hires somebody to do it. Mm -hmm. And the way, and the, and the reason it's different is because I, I don't pay, I don't pay very much and Terry pays more than me. But if you go for the curb, if you go curbside collection for the entire community, community-wide, it's a savings. <clears throat> the analysis will show community-wide, it's a savings. It's a, it would be a savings for someone like Terry. For me, it would not be a savings. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. um, that analysis, in terms of what percentage of the community is going to see an increase in collection versus mm -hmm. a decrease in collection is based on the number of people that hire do so or pedal people or whoever to pick up their stuff versus people that get a sticker and drive to Walker Street or, or to the landfill. So I think this type of study would refine that cost per household number because it would be more accurate. Yeah, okay, bro. Um, my one of my thoughts was, I understand where you're coming from, but we could get that information from you and from Terry and then just extrapolate it as long as we knew a gross percentage of who was hiring haulers and who was not. Well, that's the key. Yeah, but it seems like that's an hour. But, but, aside from that, my, my other thought was, in, uh, and it might be too late, but the census forms that go out by the city, they're always asking questions like, do you have a dog? or not, and it seems like, you know, do you have private pickup, <laughs> private trash pickup? I mean, it may be way too late to a ask that question, but when I was getting so irritated about this task in general, I'm like, this would be a much more random way. I don't know what the response rate is on that census information. It may only be 50% or something, but, but you know, that would be a better randomized way of, um, of getting that information. So. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I think when you look at it's the percentage that you just talked about, Bill, you know, in terms of what percentage is going to see an increase, what percentage is going to see a decrease, it's not going to be earth shadow mm -hmm. if that number is more accurate, 5%, 10%, one way or another. It's, it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I personally I see the task as having somewhat limited value. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of, you know, again, it's, it's not going to swing decision making. It would make the information on mm -hmm. cost per household a little bit more accurate, but you know, if I buy a newspaper, it's twenty-five cents or thirty-five cents. Uh, and that's what it would be here. Well, you know, it's mm -hmm. not going to be a huge swing; it would be more accurate. But, mm -hmm. but I do think we need to have that information for the public. We need to have the original piece of data that you talked about, which is this is the impact on the gross community, and this might be the impact on individuals right and and but I think it's a very small data point with which to get that information yeah you know and I think you can you know we know the number of people that buy stickers 
so we know that number. Yeah. And there's some, there may be some overlap of, between people that have curbside and the people that have stickers. Yeah. You can you can even present the cost per household, you know, in a range. You yeah. can say, well, we assume that nobody in the community does both, but well, we could assume that 10% of the yeah. community does both, and then you can present a, a range of cost per household and, and deal with it in that fashion. Can we back mm -hmm. into it by yeah. tonnage? Because we know how many tons, or don't we know? Do we know how many tons go into the recycling tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, Karen? We did give a, a lot of information to HDR. Um, you know, the haulers told us how many single family, how many multi family counts they had in their camp. And I think it might go back to just testing some of our assumptions. Because I had just say at one in four households, we assume that they buy more than one sticker because they're using, or permits, they're using two cars. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could actually just. Do some survey at the at the recycling center in front of the coffee shop or wherever, and just kind of test the assumptions to see how accurate mm -hmm. our data is. And or you know, we know the data is accurate. We just don't know where there's overlap. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be done, but again, for me, it's you know, it's it's a you know, you waste you waste you know, it's a, it's a time and resource issue to get information that. You know, it's probably not going to have a big impact on those, the results of the study. Yeah, bro. I, I, what I'm just not understanding from you, Tim, is like two questions. One is, do you think that even if we did this, it's not that valuable? Or do you think that staff doesn't have time to do it, or that staff does have time and it would be valuable? I don't think it's that valuable, and I don't think we have time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we want to spend or need $15,000 to get the information. Well, I, I agree with that. Right. Is there? Yeah, Mike. I just have one side question. The, the piece of information we may already have is is the split on usage between Locust Street and Millenniumville. Is it at some point we may have to consider consolidating? Uh, just wanted to do, do we know that? <coughs> Which people use or how many people use each one? Actually, because they're different. I mean, this is. This is really just for household, like bag trash yeah. and recycling. Yeah. And at the landfill, we need, you know, you can bring mattresses and tires and, you know, so all the residents probably at some point or another do both. Um, you know, we could give you. Did the Smith Street do any kind of traffic? Yeah, I mean, there was some, some um, traffic. I guess we could do it by the weight of the trash, too. Yeah. Yeah, isn't there a way of assessing yeah. the bag trash compared to people? Yeah. Well, the, the landfill isn't really a closed system. It's not used by the you know, drop-off. But I mean, assessing the yeah. amount of bag trash yes. here. Yes, actually, this this is this is you can get some good information from here. The, the number of people who who use this exclusively, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, when we do, we know the, I can't go too much detail there, but we know what all of our households in the community. Mm -hmm. We know how many stickers we sell. Mm -hmm. it, it was a basic you know, data plan. I, I, I think, I think, right. Yeah, I wouldn't spend any money chasing down anything. But I would like that information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it sounds like the consensus is that task number two is not, uh, doesn't rise to the level of being worth the, the expense in the time. Uncomfortable. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> um, want to move on to task three: uh, recycling and zero waste, diverting waste, and resource recovery. Could I hear staff comments on this one? Thank you. Oh, staff comment? Yeah. Sure. Uh, this task was related to looking at um, options for diversion. So it, it works out of a sort of a zero waste initiative um, type of approach where you would look at the different uh, types of waste that we're managing right now and whether there's other ways to divert. And it, it would be, um, you know, using the sort of resource recovery park model where they look at the materials that we're handling now and whether there were other materials that could be realistically diverted from the waste stream and managed in another fashion. 
Um, the test also looks at um, some of the economic uh, factors associated with recycling, um, such as different phase of throw <coughs> program options and other economic drivers that have been used to increase and incentivize recycling. <coughs> so it's sort of a, you know, focus on, task is really focused on diversion mm -hmm. through organizing thoughts and the zero waste and the resource recovery part uh, thought process. This wouldn't result in an actual zero waste plan for the community. I think it would talk about what a zero waste program could do for the mm -hmm. community and what the, what the steps would be to, mm -hmm. to develop such a plan to implement it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like this section. Um, I think mm -hmm. that whether or, whether or not the landfills are going to move forward, the city should be moving in this direction anyway. Um, I think that the, the public really wants this information. It's a very popular um, concept right now. And I, I think also that people should understand that zero waste is not something that you can accomplish overnight. We're not going to get to you know, a, a small, uh, de minimis residual quantity by 2011 in the landfill. You know, that we're not going to eliminate the landfill. And it also will show how, how much we're already doing. Mm -hmm. That's where I was going to. Okay. Yeah. Yes, is it? Um, I have two things. One is I'm with you on this is really important. I kind of wish we would just spend the money on the thing rather than on the whole development thing because I think we're going to end up there anyway. But, um, and the other thing about this particular thing is they're basing this whole thing on task one based on the waste generation. So what's going to happen when we come back and say there is no task one? We're not going to have to say what are they going to say. I think that might be that was just a concern I had. I think we have a basic knowledge of the, the key components of the waste stream without, without even doing task one. Mm -hmm. And we know what portions of the waste stream can realistically, I mean, I think we're doing we're doing pretty well in terms of pulling out things in the waste stream that, are, that can realistically be removed and dealt with in a fashion. <coughs> so I think we have enough information to, to do this task without actually doing um, task one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Terry. So, in, in terms of the, the product that we would get, I, I'm I'm not crabby about this section. Oh. <laughs> uh, in terms of yeah. the product we would get, um, for example, pay as you throw is kind of lumped in here. Uh, ways of dealing with organics. Uh, it's so broad. It's hard to know exactly what the product would look like. Is it going to be narrative? Is it going to be Concrete with prices, <coughs> anaerobic digestion of, of organics on a scale that would cover two tons per week is going to cost this much money. Yeah, I mean, how concrete is is will our answers be? Would you think? Um, you know, I think I don't think they're planning on being that concrete. I think they were planning on on a narrative trying to identify portions of the waste stream that could be removed. I know that one. And the reason I say that is when I was talking to Gary last night, um, one of the assumptions on this one I think was that they weren't going to do any, they weren't going to do any type of uh, preliminary design or way out for, a, you know, diversion or something. I think there were a couple of assumptions made in their budget that they weren't going to do that. So I think they were going to identify, um, you know, I think they would summarize what we're doing now, identify the portions of the waste stream that could be removed. In, this, in that resource recovery part model, and then also have a narrative on, um, you know, the different uh, page of throw options and what, uh, you know, how that might improve our diversion rates. We asked them to go into more detail with the yeah, I think they say that, um, well, okay. They'll say each HDR will, to the extent possible, identify planning level costs associated with each of the proposed policies, programs, and facility initiatives. 
also also identify alternative funding sources such as producer based fees, all based fees, etc. Capital cost financing. So it looks like they're going to have some cost information associated with some of these things. I know that it didn't include the layout. I don't know if that was But it looks like they'll have some preliminary information like that. We did ask them to focus on, on uh, providing more information on working next composting. We just felt like that was a key part of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I would expect there to be more information about that in terms mm -hmm. of cost and mm -hmm. what the approach would be. Um, I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of other components of the waste stream that are going to be, you know, the lights going to go up, where it's going to be feeds. This would be great if we could take that out of the waste stream. Most of those lights went up a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think some of this, I'm just now stepping back. And I think some of this study is to take the burden off of staff to present and also to have a neutral uh, or, uh, group to present information to our community. I think, um, so my concern is that this section feed into task six in a way that's task six, which is economic assessment of options. So I'm hoping that we'll get enough data out of this to feed into that and then also that it's clear the, the positive things that, North, that the city is currently doing. So that's a lot to ask in this task, but I just, when you work on it again, I guess that's, that's the focus I'd like to see. I mean, that's the general focus on, on going in that direction. Sure. Um, all good points. Thank you. I, There's a there's a political piece on this. Um, I mean, we certainly want to make sure that the community feels heard. The, the people who have been really interested in this stuff, I think their their interest needs to be recognized, and there has to be a sense in this report mm -hmm. that yep, we heard that. And for example, Task Four I think is specifically designed <coughs> to address that. This Task Three. Mm -hmm. And this would be a lot of work. I mean, I hate to even get into it. I, I would hate to spend that much money just because it's less trouble than really seriously digging into these issues and giving them more narrowly focused, specific tasks that we know are going to come out of this. For example, after the expansion has occurred, or it, perhaps while it's being designed, we, we're going to need a, some specific discussion of organics. Mm -hmm. Exactly how do we do that? Where do we locate it? How much space is required? What kind of costs are we can we anticipate incurring? Just exactly how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. um, well, it doesn't sound like that's going to come out of this part of the report. And we all kind of know that's where we're headed. The organics is that really Yeah, that's yeah. kind of the next yeah. next frontier, if you will. Is that true? Right. I, I think so. I, because if we don't have a, but if we don't, idea, like yeah. if we're going to tie it into the landfill gas energy project, you know, where does it actually sit? This facility, yeah. or you know, maybe look at the leaching plant potential, or oh, the old one. <coughs> yeah. I don't know. So my point is that I mean that there's a little bit of tendency to say have your eyes glazed over and say, okay, all right, all right, all right, it's going to have to go along with three. But I, truthfully, I, I think the money could be spent in a more focused way, perhaps not at this stage. Maybe maybe instead of $9,000 for a narrative of the options, they would agree to write a, a few pages for $4,000. Mm -hmm. a thousand bucks a page <laughs> just to review the things <laughs> composting experience in Massachusetts four thousand dollars I can write that one and we'll pay can you for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, th so th this really we, we I, so I, just to wrap up I, I think that this is really important but I suspect we're going to wind up spending this money a second time with with more uh, 
Yeah. Effort put into the, yeah. the front end of it, our end yeah. of it, yeah. um, so that they're answering exactly the questions we need answered. Okay. Bro? Um, and, and then this, all oh, very good point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this sort of feeds into another issue that I had in general, which was task four, if we may address that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sidebar for that. Sure. Um, emerging and waste processing technologies, that is just totally the new state DEP mm -hmm. plan, unless, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it seems like just take out this that first three pages with all the little charts and stuff that express all of this. So that seems like that needs to be first and then go into the recycling and zero waste as a subset of that and with specific cost information. So I'm sort of my point is is like how can this help us with task six? And and we can get a bunch of stuff from the state D P plan, but we also have staff time to consider because they don't have an unlimited amount of time even if they are vulnerable to monetary incentives. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mike. A um, couple of thoughts. One is the, the whole issue of cost per task is is seems high, but we've we've ended up with a national firm with a great reputation and I think to some extent we're, we're going to pay for that. And, and I hope that there are benefits from that. I mean, uh, otherwise, uh, we we just picked the wrong path. But I do think there are benefits in in getting that kind of expertise. So I I think some of it is scope and price, level of effort and price that Jim needs to negotiate once we tell him what we want. But um, so so if I put the price aside for a minute and I look at task three, it sure seems that in the community. There's, there's great support, and I think on the board, for some kind of more formal uh, resource recovery park. And what I think might come out of task three is that between what the city does now and the, the businesses that are available in the region to process waste products, that, that there aren't any other elements that could be added to a park other than compost. Mm. And, and I think people left that... that community meeting that we had with this idea that that the answer to our problems lies in the resource recovery park. And I, I can't, I, I just have this feeling that for the scale of Northampton and the quantity of waste we have, that there's very little that we can do to enhance um, waste diversion other than composting and maybe a couple of minor things. I mean, we could do a better job with batteries, but we do batteries. And, you know, there's some there's some small things. But outside Northampton, there are places you can take construction materials and, and other other things. So I think that that may be a benefit to Section 3, is it helps us focus on what the realistic options are for us going forward. And, and I think if that keeps us from wasting more time and money on on concepts that will never come to fruition, then we might get, this might be worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It comes mm -hmm. out differently or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, it sounds like we've sort of been going back and forth. Now we're maybe leaning a little toward going ahead with this? Or what do you, Kara, you seem to be the one who's perhaps most well, concerned. Well, I, I, I agree with Mike. I, I, it, it sure looks like we're going to wind up Looking at our options for organics, mm -hmm. um, and well, you're concerned if, about if the twenty-four thousand dollars. I, I can't quite leave the price mm -hmm. aside. If that if that <laughs> merely if that merely tells us that, mm -hmm. it'd be like oh jeez. Um, and if it merely tells us that without giving us much more specifics, mm -hmm. uh, but it, if it tells us um, that yes, there is a, a demand in a market, and here here's the demand in market, and, uh, and this is how it's going to grow or not grow, it seems to me that's pretty useful information. This so perhaps if if three, you know, if you said, well, how about if three were refocused so that there's a, a narrative discussion of the options, um, the resource recovery part, mm -hmm. pros and cons, that sort of thing. And then really digs into the organics to see mm -hmm. if that really is viable. I, you know, that would be. I, I would certainly support that. Yeah. Just yeah. the more specific they can be mm -hmm. about what we can do to push further. 
more but, specific but, but we don't need like wicked suit see the problem we can't ask them to do everything we can't ask them to be specific about batteries and really specific about mattresses and they, 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 well, we already do they, all those. Right, but they can't be all over the place. We need to... Yeah, but they might, you know, they might have um, knowledge of, of what we could do with rigid plastics or, you know, something mm -hmm. that we're not... We don't have um, a local market for, but there's a technology in Yugoslavia, yeah. you know, that... that or there's a more distant market for it. So there, there may be components that are wasting other than that probably would have to I, I, I'm assuming there would be plastic. Some, either some plastic or Yeah, for real. So my only concern about that is just that I want it to be a practical. I mean, if that's the whole thing about the, the state DEP plan. It's like all this stuff, but you know, we're not going to happen. It's not. We don't have enough of the population base to have it happen in the state of Massachusetts, much, much less in the community of Northampton, 33 members or not. And so I think that I don't want to see them go down a route where they're where we're putting th that valuable time needs to go into addressing practical aspects of what we can do. And if, if they're going to let us know about Yugoslavia's hard plastic and that there is a uh, you know, that that is a possible thing for us to do and it costs this much and there's one uh, 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 box leaving from the Boston Seaport every year, you know, okay, that's fine. But but in general, I want it to be something that can be... Am I, am I so, dreaming? I'm sorry. Do you, so do you think that we can focus uh, the consultant on, on these essential issues? This one? Okay. I think part of what I was hoping that, that would come out of this past, and it's a little, um, I guess the, the whole issue about zero waste and getting some direction and how a zero waste plan would be developed for a community and how it would be implemented in terms of setting a, setting a direction for future solid waste planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I think it was interesting to, interesting to see that, to learn a little yeah. bit more about mm -hmm. the specifics of that. Mm -hmm. And I know it's, you know, it's sort of a soft, Thing and it'll be narrative format. Uh, but I, you know, I was, I was looking forward to getting some more information. And it also is the thing that the subcommittee is going to be focusing on. This particular right. section is going to be their main mission to. Yeah, this may be is, is sort of a charter for, in, in essence, for the <clears throat> yes. So the hard part, and and I say this partly, Jim, because I know how hard you've worked on this. Um, the hard part is making sure we ask exactly the correct question. So if, if part of number three is to create the charter for our solid, solid waste subcommittee, then that needs to be expressly articulated in a way that the end product lines up real nicely with that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and and that's, that's the issue. That's the issue, I think, for the whole thing. But that's a particular issue here. It's articulating all the questions so they so we wind up with something we can use right away. For example, if organics are, in fact, where we're heading, that, that needs to be a real questions have to be structured so that it really focuses their attention on that. And we get more practical detail back in that one area. If, if in fact, that's the... Okay. Do you want to do a one-minute summary of, of, of what we feel the key points of this are, or do you want elaboration on it? Yeah, well, let's see, let me uh, take a shot at, at this. I think um, what we're particularly interested in is uh, focusing on the resource recovery park, organic composting, and getting information uh, that will be uh, locally appropriate to Northampton uh, and um, helping us take that next step to actually building. Know, planning 
uh, a facility. Um, but it's also, I take a, a somewhat broader, it's hard to combine the two, but a, you know, a broad, create a broader picture um, to help uh, launch efforts in the area of zero waste for the subcommittee. When I say it that way, it sounds contradictory. Okay. How about three parts? One is that narrative section that discusses the zero waste concept mm -hmm. and, and uh, kind of a broad strokes thing. Um, but hopefully not so broad that they don't exactly pertain to a community of 30,000 people. Uh, so I, I guess a narrative how, how to boil that down to our scale. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a look at what, what's happening, batteries, mattresses, electronics. Look at the resource recovery park concept within a framework of what we're doing. So we don't need, uh, I mean, I'm sure there are things that happen down Springfield that just never happen here. We don't need to spend a lot of time talking about, you know, statewide region. We, we, like, our little one is like the batteries go here, the mattresses go there. That's mm -hmm. our little tiny part. So it'd be, I'd be interested in having them talk Okay, about so, that. so, uh, so our assessment summary of what what the existing situation is, and and what resource recovery options a small community might consider that we're not doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had two more things. The um, the economics of cage and by bag system and other drivers, economic and. But is that going to end up partly in task what? seven? I think test, it belongs to test six, I'm sorry. Uh, this is things that would promote diversion. Oh, okay, I'm sure, sure. Okay. And and, and help us to approach zero waste. Then there was one other thing about you, you said that there's a political this is kind of a political mm -hmm. piece. I think it needs to be recognized that this is a place where we can say, you know, city needs to go this way, whether we're whether we have the landfill expansion or not. Mm -hmm. That we've yeah. already done a lot and we deserve a little bit of credit, and you know, we're, we're listening. This mm -hmm. is what we want to, you know, this is an important thing mm -hmm. that people want to hear more about. So I, I kind of put that all in a. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So broad conceptual framework, resource park concepts as they would relate to a small community. Ours. Yeah. yeah. Can I hear and not think it? Yeah. Okay. Specific focus on the organic composting. Mm -hmm. Identify the materials that could be diverted. So would that be in the resource in recovery the park part? Yeah. But are we, are we in fact interested in more? really digging a little deeper on the organic piece? Uh, I think <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm personally very interested in what they see as the um, the future demands of markets for the organic piece. Something that would be, I think, difficult for us to assess internally. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I think we, we already had a very successful uh, organic diversion program in Minnesota. So we sure. know we know that demand is there. We have 167 food you know, or restaurants and you know permitted food entities. Most mm -hmm. colleges are they using? Yeah, I, I think you know we we know you know you start small mm -hmm. and then you keep building with scale. I think we know that there's a demand. There. Okay, so what do you see then as the key information that we would want um, from a consultant? Um, um, Looking at in vessel systems, aerobic, anaerobic, mm -hmm. scale, costs, you know, whether we could actually, but the, the, the work, logistics of where it would go with it. Mm -hmm. Because space is, is an issue mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not completely sold on the length of the place we want to do this. Mm -hmm. So, looking at other so potential lo locating the factors. And so are we at a point where we should ask them to look at 
citing it? I think we need, I think it makes sense to look at all the factors. And, and to be honest with you, you know, we've looked at doing this. I mean, I've, I've heard some people say, you know, why should the city even be in that business? Mm -hmm. There seems to be a lot of interest in it, mm -hmm. but there's not enough interest to, you know, you get a private company building, I mean, there's a couple of small scale organic waste composting facilities that are in this region, but I mean, you don't have any of the major waste players getting into this saying, yeah, organics composting, boy, that's the thing we're going to be making some money in, yeah. you know, the building facilities left and right. I mean, if there, mm -hmm. there, there's a financial incentive to develop a facility like that, they'd be spreading out. Well, that citing yeah. is a real issue. Mm -hmm. is a issue. Okay. If you provided a site, they might. But I guess, yeah. you know, I'm wondering if, you know, there's, there's a demand, everybody thinks it would be a great idea, we're thinking we could do it, you know, part of me says, well, what are the other, can't we take a bigger picture and, and, and look at it and say, well, what are the, are there any statewide drivers that, you know, that, that we could talk to the state about, but, you know, providing incentives for private companies to get into that business. Okay. Susan Monroe? I, I change off the organic and sort of this is the second to the last paragraph I think is important. We were talking about the costs associated with the policy and alternative funding sources. So I'd like to see that still be in there. Okay. Could uh, I just Ro? go back to get uh, Jim saying are you saying that you would like to see uh, task three address cost insight uh, issues or business plan issues of uh, organic Okay. Uh, I right here. Are you suggesting that they should be? Well, let me re let me tell you what what I, what I think. I guess, and then, and then it seems to me that we need to know how many acres we would require, and some sense of what the cost would be. And that's I would have thought that might be sufficient at this point. Just like, what are we up against here? It's going to cost us uh, $112,000 a month, and it's going to require uh, four acres. And uh, I would have been happy with that much. Are you saying, no, actually, that we should have them consider Locust Street versus here, mm -hmm. and like uh, site surveys? And, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to bring that to the Okay. So it's not like a consensus. Um, well, we have a consensus here. Jim, you know, you know where we are. Yeah, that was very helpful. Okay, all right, good. All right, do you want to go into task four? I think we discussed it briefly already. Um, and this is the um, emerging uh, waste processing technology options. The atomic option. Yes. <laughs> the atomic alternative. Any, um, any comments? The, the goal, just to, to summarize again, um, the goal here was to provide information about the uh, emerging technologies that were discussed in the public forum. Here we're going to provide some updated information that continued, HDR has continued to work on evaluation of some of these technologies for projects for other, you know, other, mm -hmm. other parts of the country. Uh, similar to what, to what Rose said, a lot of this information about emerging technologies were really discussed in some detail in the DEP report that came out recently with the Commission. Um, there's a lot of good information in that report. Um, when I talked to Gary yesterday, he was suggesting rather than actually doing this task, he says, well, can't we just take the executive summary from the DEP policy statement report and put it in the appendix and it say, you know, if people are interested in background information on emerging technologies, you know, you can look at that and just provide it and then, you know, we don't have to do the task. Uh, I, I would tend to, tend to agree with mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, Mike? Well, does the DEP document talk about the size of the waste stream required to support these new technologies? They talk about some of the financial factors and they, and they do draw conclusions about whether they feel that whether any of these technologies are going to be uh, sort of a player in waste management in the future in the Commonwealth in general, the answer is no, um, with the exception of uh, composting, which they, they decided that they didn't want to include in the 
the struggle, the trouble with the some operation of the city out there. Mm-hmm. I'd just like to point out that for Terry's sake, this one's only $2,800. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that sounds like a bargain. <laughs> well, and and Terry will do it for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're basically saying here that some life is going to use anything. Mm-hmm. And it's unsuitable for the thing to survive. And then we can look at that report, the other report, and, say, and, and make our decision there. However, if there is one of these that you thought, you know, that one of us thought were. Then I think we should have a look, a closer look at it. But why are we looking at it when it's not going to be suitable for this? This, the original driving force behind this was a meeting with the mayor uh, a few months back, and uh, her concern was, uh, and uh, it makes perfect sense to me, is that she wanted to make sure that everyone felt like their idea was at least heard and considered, if only to the extent that it was ruled out because it was impractical. But at least we thought about it. No one who had a good idea was not responding. It's a response. Yeah. So that's all. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a response right here. And unlikely any of the emerging technologies would be suitable for them. But it seemed worth it, worth it, worth a, yeah, a paragraph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know, some people may wonder about shooting it in a rocket to the moon. Well, here are the drawbacks to that, and you really need a big, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's more than. So that's kind of the. Twenty six hundred pounds per person. Bro. I'm sort of not Um th- That's where I like Gary's comment about just using the executive summer yeah. because. The executive summary addresses all of this, but it also has some great data relevant to our community, which is about um, environmental impacts, um, toxicology, carbon footprint. I mean, it, it does put a lot of, it doesn't really answer questions, but it does put some things together. Landfills don't look so bad in that particular chart. I mean, they're not perfect, but. Mm-hmm. but um, but I think that there's some information there that, that puts together a lot of different variables, maybe even beyond what we're doing, that does address the mayor's consideration. So should there be a, a few, a page or so just pulling that into our specific situation and then referring to the executive summary for the, the meat of the details? I mean, that's kind of what you were suggesting. I, I think it's important that in the text of the document, there's a statement that the board then accepts when it accepts the report that sort of establishes our position. And I don't think that works with the company being independent. So I, that, that <coughs> Well, we could still have the report in, in the appendix, but oh, sure. a summary in that. Sure. Right. So, so the consensus is to go ahead with this, but emphasizing that it is a small task and it builds upon the TELUS report. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? We want them to define why they say it's unlikely we'll use it. Yeah, and right, right. Those and kinds of so yeah. they need to integrate that executive summary back into the report. It, the, the, it might that, be a page or two. Yeah, okay. Right. Does that make sense, John? I mean, mm. Well, wouldn't we want to know why they don't think it's suitable for Miss Hampton? Yeah, I think so. And that would be the... Uh, the and, and Mike has made the point that we're, we're retaining a, a, a nationally known consulting firm, and I think their opinion on this is going to be pretty valuable. Here's my thoughts. We can have them do the scores as described for 2600 bucks. I could alternately have Stan Tech write a paragraph summarizing a couple of the key points in the DPP Pellis Institute report and then include that report executive summaries and appendix and maybe that accomplishes it and probably cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, if we have HDR do much of anything with this, it's going to be probably 2600 And if we just want to rely a little more heavily on uh, the Telus Institute information that was going to be DPP, then that comes with a much more cost. Is that clear? Hey. Explain the options. So, which one do you, does everyone prefer? <coughs> if, you, if you go back to the purpose of the section, it's, it's to show that you actually looked at all these other technologies and determine 
that none of them were appropriate for this work. And so, you know, summary of like we, we had it the public forum. They did a an overview probably in more detail than we needed. So which um, I'm just I, I think we needed the section. I think Spantech could could do a Job the, the, key, the key piece here is, if we're going to ask somebody to analyze why these technologies aren't appropriate for us, that's going to take a little bit of work, and then we're going to get 26 minutes on the desk. If you're looking for a pass-through of just the summary of the state with these emerging technologies, blah, 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 they don't mm -hmm. think they're going to, any of them are going to play a major role, um, we're not going to look at these any further, then that's going to cost a few hundred dollars to write. So, if you want something specific about why gasification plasma arc is not uh, applicable to our situation, you know, then someone can have to come up with, you know, some oh, yeah. basic technical rationale to go through each, you know, each technology and say someone, gasification, no good. Someone somewhere must have made that assessment you could refer to. Yeah. Otherwise, how would we know that gasification won't work or is infeasible at this scale? Well, there's all the studies that right. tell us. Right, exactly. Well, so you've got that. I mean, they, if, you, if you talk to the people that are responsible for these technologies, they'll tell you that it'll work great for you. Yeah. That's the difference. And if you, at, if you, at if some you hire, cost. If you hire, you know, if you hire HDR or somebody to get an independent mm -hmm. review, they'll tell you, well, you know, the technology is good, but it's not good for you, and this is why. And that's, and that's the difference. You know, there'll always, always be somebody out there that'll do it. There'll always be somebody out there that'll tell you that the technology I mean, we had, we've had people in here. I, I talked to a guy uh, a little while ago about a, an emerging technology, and you know, he was telling me it would be great, 65 bucks a ton for a community of our size, and you know, it's the, the greatest thing I've ever heard of. And then he got to HDI, and I'm like, well, you know, it's probably not great for you, and this is why. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like you're arguing against yourself now. And what <laughs> I'm sort of hearing is that you're sort of saying we could have Stan Tech summarize it for $100 and, and do this, but then I'm also hearing, uh, if I can categorize my good pair is saying, okay, let's have HDR do it because that gives us an outside person doing it. If you, if some of you were also just saying that. I think I'm just, I think I'm just reiterating what both the options are. Yeah. Either you're going to get someone spitting back the DEP report that says these things were looked at and this is generally what they found, yeah. or, you know, we have a company say, these are what the options are and these are why they're not applicable, and then do it to more camp. Those are, you know, those are really two options. Um, I could personally, I could do either way. I don't think it's a huge, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal one way or another. Just you know, however you want to go about it. I like what Terry said, uh, which is germane. That this is sort of where we got started, and these are important issues. Uh, and to me, twenty eight hundred dollars, I think it's worth it. And we could still include the state DEP. Right. Oh, yeah, sure. It's got to be a part of it. <laughs> because then yeah. it's like, you know, we, we do have a community where we can't get enough information. We can't get enough legitimization of all the information. So, then if, so maybe we should spend the $2,600 on this. And then we have the state. We have HDR. We have Stantec. We have all these people. Mm -hmm. There's no one else that could say. Yes, here. So I guess though I would uh, so I, I guess I agree. I, I think with I would say I'm in favor of HDR doing it, and I would hope at the end of each section we can see a uh, a cost per ton for each disposal option um, that is adjusted for the size of our waste stream. So with a fifty thousand ton per year or whatever the breakdowns are. Um, you could expect a cost per ton of about ninety-six dollars or something, mm -hmm. and then and then it'll speak for itself. And then the summary at the end says we we might have to be satisfied with them saying this technology just can't be built unless you have five hundred tons a day or a thousand. Yeah, tons a day. that'd be okay. Fine. And and, and <laughs> it just doesn't apply to your situation. Yeah, that'd, that'd be fine. fine. So but so I'd like I'd like to sort of articulate the thresholds yes. there, mm -hmm. well, or even something specific like. The community of Northampton can't really afford to um, fund regional. Uh, uh, no, they don't know that. Well, but a statement. But see, the the beauty of saying that you need five uh, five hundred thousand yeah, yeah. tons no, waste stream is, 
the, it's a number. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I understand. Right. 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 You draw your own conclusion. You're right. Okay. You're right. Okay. As opposed to saying it's unaffordable yeah. with no data that's no, no support. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, I, I have to apologize. I have to run to a faculty meeting uh, in UMass. And so I want to ask all of you if you're able and willing to stay uh, and to keep the quorum here in my absence or not. <laughs> Okay. Well, I had a 9.30 meeting. I rescheduled for 10.30. Oh, okay, I'm for waiting a while. then. Yeah. I think we're yeah. It gets faster now, right? Yeah. I, I don't have anything. Okay. So. Right. 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 I, I have to, to <laughs> look out. But, uh, oh. okay. Turn the meeting oh, over to Terry. But let me just say also that um, with task number six, you know, that to me that's uh, central. Mm -hmm. and so just jumping ahead and let me... Um, just give you my thoughts here. Um, I I really wanted to see uh, a, a bit of an expansion of task number six, uh, and in particular uh, to consider the issue of uh, restricting uh, the waste shed, uh, because this has been on the public's right. mind and on our minds mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, the how we would do this yeah, is exactly. one issue, but um, to me the question is. If we were to restrict it to the smallest practical and political uh, area possible, which might be Northampton, uh, I've heard people say Northampton, um, um, East Hampton, and Williamsburg, uh, how would that change the economics? Uh, the, the central question here, which is uh, whether to close down the landfill or to expand it. Uh, and um, I, I'm going to suspect that uh, the economics of operating and, and expanding the landfill and continuing under those conditions is not going to look very favorable. Uh, and it may be a fairly simple analysis, but I think it's important that someone independent uh, do that sort of analysis. We uh, actually have that task under the existing scope. It is. To look at uh, the range of cottages from an economic feasibility standpoint. Yeah, very specifically, these the two options, keeping it regional and keeping yeah. it local. Yeah, what they were going to do is a sensitivity analysis to set up all the, mm -hmm. set up the economic tables. And then everything that, everything that happens economically is based on revenues generated from the income waste, right? So you can play with that number, what the range is to look at the revenues and see, you know, where the break-even point is from a product standpoint. So that would, you know, the, the answer to the question that you're asking would fall out of that type of analysis. Okay. And then... Um, but why, why wouldn't you want them to do that? They are. They, it's, uh, we already have it on the contract. Oh, okay. But it's so it just, it just isn't appearing here because it's already... This is yeah. additional to what they've already been working on. Okay. The other thing that's not appearing here is the, is the sale of the landfill site or the permit. Um, the city decides that they don't want to be in the... In the business, but they realize that the footprint has a value and they want to do something with it, then uh, you know, what is the value of that permit? Mm -hmm. So that's another task that has been authorized for the permit. You're not closing the landfill to sell it and it's not privately? Oh, that would be fine. Good. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I, I do have to go. Right. Bye. Bye. I'm going to be in trouble. Thanks. Um, yeah, but we want to know that information, don't we think? Well, that does just fine. Go, I mean, go. Like, but, but do we need to know that? I mean, we know that either you want to do it or it's going to be closed, I thought, is where we were headed. Well, I think the, uh, the I'm sorry, the, um, the permit, it's, it's an asset that the city has, and if they choose not to use it, uh, it probably makes sense for the city to understand what the value of the asset is. That's, I think that's the purpose of the task to decide. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an asset. If you want to put it in the closet and not use it, then that's, that's, a, you know, that's a reasonable decision, but you should know what you just put in the closet. I think that's mm -hmm. the purpose of the task. Uh, but can, can you expand on that? You just well, don't want to we, know the number. No, or? because we we have made, a, I thought we had sort of made a decision. Either we're doing the landfill or the landfill closes. That leaves open a huge thing of, oh, let's sell the landfill to this private enterprise and keep the landfill open and it'll be run privately. Do we want to do that? 
I thought that we had already discussed that and it was off the table. Having the information doesn't mean we're doing it. When we went out to bid for landfill operations in 2001, one of the bids was to buy the land. So just because you have the information doesn't mean that it shouldn't be closed. I think the idea is that it's a it's a question that it's a reasonable question that um, we feel the city council will ask at some point. I mean, it's so much going to ask that. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm sure Terry it, Terry's always uh, very sensitive to a lot of the economic stuff, and I can see coming into a meeting and having Terry say, "Well, we're not going to use a lamp, but we've got the permit to do it. You know, what's the value?" You know, and then we'll find the city council will be arguing. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Um, are we going to address the fact that the city doesn't control what we're going to do? Uh, different ways that the, the waste could be. Do I try to you do? That's the nice segue into task five if we want to move on to that. Uh, uh, well, four's done. Right. right. We've yeah. agreed that HDR is going to do that. Yeah. And we so we are on five. So the the idea behind Task Five was to look at um, implementation issues in terms of cost and not controlling the mainstream. We're looking at um, other project um, financing options, whether it's um, well, it's the, the sale of the land that would be one option, but whether um, you know, there, there are just other, other design build options that we can look at as a way of financing, uh, financing the facility. So the idea would be to give them information about that. Because part of the, part of the problem that we've, we've talked about is that we don't control the waste stream. We don't have haulers. We're not waste management or allied. Um, our facility right now basically works on um, market forces and being competitive to the good field. People come to us because we have a market rate tip fee. But if our tip fee were higher, people wouldn't come to us, and we don't, we're not in the hauling business, so we couldn't be bringing the waste to our own facility, which basically means that the payment of the facility is subject to market forces. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at um, an incineration facility, as an example, if you wanted to build an incineration facility, if you're a private enterprise, you want to build an incineration facility. If you want to, if you want to get bonds to build that facility, you need to show the bonding company that you have contracts that guarantee a certain amount of waste and a certain amount of dollars coming in, a certain tip fee, so that you can pay off those bonds, otherwise you won't get the bonds. So everything in the business typically is, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to get bonds to build a facility, typically you're in and better control of your, or stronger control of your waste stream in terms of having contracts agreed upon 50s. And we don't, and this, the city doesn't have that right now. So, uh, I, I mean, I hear, I hear what you're saying. I'm not exactly sure what you're, I'm not getting the point. So for financing this, clearly it's going to be bonds. It has to be bonds. We can't write that check. So you're saying that their focus is going to be on determining whether we can have fixed contracts or? No, I think the idea is to present different options of financing the project if you want to do that. I mean, obviously we're going to. You mean different options for paying off the inevitable bonds? And what might another option be, for example? I, I'm having a hard time thinking of any other option than the pit fees. Yeah, I think, you know, basically they would involve public private partnerships where you try to come to some type of agreement with a, you know, a private waste company to help. Um, you know, you, you'd have, you'd, you'd trade some of the control of the facility, you know, for, you know, assistance in financing, financing the facility. And it, and it, and basically what it, what it relates to is, is sort of a financial risk management exercise. Um, we can we can get bought. The city can always float bonds because we have you know we have the ability to go back to the, the basic tax rate to pay bonds back. Mm -hmm. But um, you know does does the city want to do that, or do they want to look at other options that wouldn't involve a potential impact on the tax rate? 
um, if you have a market, if we're able to develop a facility, um, you know, that's competitive, uh, competitive in the market from a fifty standpoint, then we won't have to rely on the tax base to pay for it, right? Like we'll have the the revenue income coming from the fifties, and you'll be able to pay off the bonds without having any impact on the tax. But if for some reason, and it, and this is one of the reasons why the emerging technologies aren't so great, because if you do something that results in the payback. Uh, typically being greater than what the market rate is, we don't control the market. No one will come and we won't be able to, you know, the city will, won't be able to pay the bills. So you can see there's a, you know, there's a, anytime you enter a, into a venture, there's a, there's a financial risk of how, uh, the decision making about how it's going to be paid back. It's not a risk necessarily, it's, uh, you know, the means of by which you're going to pay the bills. Um, but they'll look at other options too, and some of them wouldn't be feasible, like creating a solid waste management system or implement, implementing flow control within the campus or franchising um, the city. Or, you know, the, some of them, some of the options are out there, but they, they may or may not be. To control the waste stream, there are different ways of controlling. The waste stream. I'm just having a hard time getting my head wrapped around what we're at. so we're asking them to look at to give us some options for all the different ways to pay off the bond. The bond is inevitable, right? right. So this is strictly discussion of how do you pay for the bond, and it's a pretty brief discussion. It's taking on it all the past. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a quick overview. Of you know, these are the different ways of uh, delivering a project of this type that has been used by the communities, and this is how it would work. We would need to see zero waste, right? Anyway, right? And we would want to, um, not necessarily. That, well, that if you're just talking about, mm -hmm. I think it's necessary if currently the city is I mean, it's, it's, it, this is a really crucial question. I mean, if you mm -hmm. build it, we will raise the cost. And it's got to be realistic um, when when we don't have contracts and we don't have, we don't control those. So. My my question is in what about the volatility of the market? We seen the huge volatility this, this year. So if we include that in there, that makes it more complicated, but it's certainly a factor. You know, the approaches, the options are, are the same, regardless of um, so. I think some of this gets back to the question of Dave, who I got just asked before we went, before we left, which is, you know, does it make sense to reduce the tonnage and then come up with a small, a small region that maybe we could go and contract for the Burgeries camp and mm -hmm. Catfield or whatever communities and get them to sign on and then operate a, a you know, facility to you know, a slightly reduced tonnage, but we have a guarantee of the tonnage coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that would be like it appears to spur the conversation. I don't think yeah. a lot of people have thought about yeah. you know, the financing and how these things work, but the, the basic model that the city has used for the last you know, 30 years is. So you need to be aware of it. You know, things keep rolling along, but you need to be aware of why they're rolling along and what will continue to roll along in the future. I think they can be bad all the time. And you would need it one way or the other. Well, if you made it this way. But this also answers the question about if this, since it's not ordained by. Um, Ordinance or how that the city does may not technically have a responsibility to solid waste and to the cost to individual and you're going back to that question of individual customers, the, the residents of Northampton, would that be here or is that? I think that's that in the more, next one. No, okay. So this is strictly looking at the different ways to amortize the bonds. It's the business model aspect of it. I mean, the the justification. The. 
I think it's more not how to amortize the bonds. I think it's it's who provides. Where does the guarantee come from that you can pay the bonds? And right right now our model is okay. the city the city guarantees that we pay the bonds, and we hope that we collect enough trash to cover our costs. Is that the model we want to go forward with, or do we want another guarantor of the bond payment? Or a split. Or a split of that, yes. I think that's really what it's going to be. Seven, um, or, or six is the economic assessments. Now, now the original report, this is all in addition to something that's already uh, in draft form. Yeah, the, you know, the original study had this text in there, so there was this draft you know, financial analysis tables and things that have been prepared. The idea behind this task was that if there was a significant change to a number of the assumptions that were made developing those financial models, then we have to go back and revise the financial work that was done. Um, and that's what this task was, 11.6, to go back and you know, look at various options and to revise um, economic assumptions and rework the work that's been done. And, uh, you know, I think based on where we've got today, I don't think that there's really a lot that we Pay as you throw has come up a few times in the discussion today. I'm not positive it belongs in this, but do you, do you think it does? I, I think it belongs in the zero waste, the diversion section. Up in three. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that's, is that in your notes? I'm not sure that we actually, I, I've had it as a note on my side here to circle back to it at some point. That was my idea to put that in there. That wasn't something that came out of the public forums or even the board discussion. I thought it seemed like an appropriate time to put it in the study because the board was um, on its way to implementing a bag uh, system and a change in the page of fuel. I thought having some discussion on the benefits and as well as other economic incentives that made sense in that section. So in this section, for example, in the draft report, they talk about, with with numbers, you know, with dollar amounts, they talk about private hauler versus public hauler versus take it to the dump yourself. Would pay as you throw fit here, or? I think I was kind of referred I mean, ba ba basically, the way it, the way it would fit in the the way it would fit in task six is in terms of revenue generation. Um, so we plug in a number for pit fees, waste across the scale, and then we have another line item for uh, sticker sales or whatever we're doing right now. So if we're going to change that, if we wanted to change it and say yes, we're going to change the bags, we would take the estimated revenue from the bags. And then put it into line on the, uh, the financial models because it's a revenue source. That's the only way it would come into task six is a, is a revenue, you need to generate revenue. So it goes into three as a way to, as an incentive, to drive the, uh, the recycling? Right. And I, I agree with you. I think that's an option. I think it needs to be mentioned in three, but in depth. Um, I think it makes sense to have it. Yeah, I think, I think it makes sense to have it. I, I thought it makes sense to have it in three. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to have it in six because if you include it in six, then you're then the board would be saying, well, we are going to be implementing a bag system because that's the basic assumption that goes into all the financial models. And I'm not sure that's what we want to do. Like it needs to be based on you know our current current means of generating revenue. So it looks different than it means. Section six is costs. Yep. Cost per household if we do it this way. Cost per household if we do it that way. Cost well, I wanted to make sure that that was included because that was one of those items. Cost per household or cost per resident. Or something. What we had talked about at the original meeting is that uh, it'd be broken down. There are approximately 8,000 residences in the city. 
and eleven. Oh, eight thousand. Oh, because some are apartments. We have eight thousand water meters, roughly, right? But we have more households than water meters. Because some are apartment buildings and multi-unit. Okay. But this would include the class here. We're hoping that everything will be broken down that yeah. way, so That's you right. can. Well, we have to ask. It, right? We yeah, we already have. Okay. Well, so I, I guess that's my question about pays you throw. And then adding the other thing with the regional or local. Yeah, that's that is that is a that is an option over here. That's a good good comment. There's an option over there kind of uh, scope that should be listed there. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Could could we go? Through the options, just to make sure we understand the bearing. Starting back at the top. Or option one. No, option, no. Option, 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 under six. six. Okay. Under, sure. Under six. So there are five options, and I wasn't quite sure how mainly Locust Street played into um, these options. Yeah, I can, I can try to put the crack in it, given mm -hmm. where we were. Op option one would be pretty much the status quo option where we expand the landfill. We don't make any changes to the draw box. Um, option two, um, close the landfill and drop off center at the landfill and make more of the changes so it would maintain the local street. Um, option three, expand the landfill at city. City arranged curbside collection for single family homes and making any changes so it would maintain the drop offs um, but for the curbside. What's the interest in having drop offs if we have curbside collection? What would you use them? Um, most curbside communities have convenience drop off centers and because you know, people moving and they have a lot of extra stuff mm -hmm. or um, steam clean out. Or Maybe some recyclables don't get picked up at the curb and taken to the drop yeah, off? Yeah, but the, yes, because mm -hmm. curbside is normally just what you think of as the most material files. Okay. And you know, there are and other materials that could be diverted as we do. So option four would be uh, close the landfill and the drop off center next to the landfill and, and arrange for type collection citywide. And so we keep the local street drop off on that one also. Okay. And then five is uh, close the landfill and don't provide any service. No drop offs. Okay. Got it. And then there was going to be an option on. Uh, the sale of the land, just what the asset value of the land is. It's not really an option as much as just providing information on the value, what the value of the facility is. And then um, the other option is the one that we just raised season, which is working at a reduced tonnage operation based on uh, the uh, financial analysis, the sensitivity analysis of the tonnage. Yes. Okay. In the, the paragraph that follows the options, there's talk about, um, it, it gets a little vague. It says HDR may expand the list of alternatives that can include options such as developing the Glendale Road drop off site into a modern resource recovery park, modifying and expanding the Phase Your Grow program, expanding. I wonder if we could get. I would think we'd want to be a little more specific about what we want to come out of that, that paragraph, because that all sounds pretty neat, but they may come back and say, no, we decided not to do it. Or So is there a, a, a particular reason, Jim, why that was listed sort of in an open-ended fashion? Uh, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't actually see a lot of information coming out of the previous five tasks that are going to cause a tremendous reward in the uh, of the economic analysis. Because we're, we're looking at the waste stream as a whole in these, you know, in these analysis so you know, uh, this resource recovery park option, you know, it's not necessarily going to impact our decision on whether the course will have or expand it. Because you're dealing with a, with a small percentage of the waste stream. It's kind of a weird paragraph to get in there. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I would have been happy if, if they just that didn't have that sentence because it, it's confusing. I I don't think they're going to generate enough money to include the costs of a resource recovery park. And, uh, and the whole phase you throw program issue is, as we talked earlier, a revenue issue and not a cost issue, so it doesn't really belong there. Yeah, <clears throat> my eyes glaze over when we start looking at the the, the uh, digesters of the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, it's, it's spent too much money on that paragraph. That's right. I think we we have the elements regarding resource recovery park and phase control in earlier tasks. I just take them out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, we're just going to ask if in previous citation that there was going to be um, uh, an allusion to the financial cost or benefit to for um, resource recovery park there's going to be or pay you through an allusion to the cost and benefits of those particular programs maybe they don't belong in the options section but it seems like that information would be um, relevant I think there should be I think there should be some discussion of the page or throw cost elements in that task three. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of, you know, how, how does it work. And right. But also if there is um, a resource recovery part, we would like to know. Well the task three calls for them to look at a resource recovery model that would work with a small community right. like ours. Right. Taking into account what we're already doing, mm -hmm. possibly expanding it a little bit. And that would probably generate some information about costs. You know, that, just that's my question. Figure one full time person. You know, da, 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 da. So this would be a redundant uh, lot, couple of lines, really, according to Because it doesn't fit in with options. It's a financial aspect, but it's not options. I'm just going to make a point of time. I can remember that. I don't know how much I'm using it. Why? Because you're the you're more <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to drop that paragraph. Good. Is that, that correct? Or that, those lines. Yeah. All right, numbers. Uh, so does that feel like we're okay on six? Yes. 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 I'm sorry, throughout that you want as much yeah. cost and financial yeah. Yeah. information as possible when they're discussing whatever. So I'm going to assume that's in task three. So the public meetings and forums fairly uh, straightforward. Yeah. Pretty expensive. Well, they're going to prepare for 48 hours before every meeting. Yeah, to report on a report that we just, I mean, I don't know. <coughs> Here we go again. It seems like a lot of money. Just, what if we say we I can come to one meeting? meeting. Well, they, they were talking about having three, three, four. Yeah, six person, day, six person day trips. Two people Because you want to be able to talk in the car. Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't have really to. Yeah, yeah, it's it's time and expense, so we can I can actually drop that uh, their assumption on the number of meetings and forms and everything we're going to need. So. All right. I'm uh, so we're okay with seven more. Yeah, yes. I'm okay. With seven. Eight of the draft study report is we need a draft. Why is it a draft study report rather than just a study report? I don't get it. Oh, they're drafting it. That's a verb. 
draft. No. How, um, so we review a draft and then they take our comments and then they do a final. Uh, well, final, final better be included. So in maybe that, that would be in the process of drafting. Uh, hard to say. Anyway. I just want to be sarcastic and wonder if we're paying double because tax three four is draft section every four. And so I hope that's eliminated for. I think the fee for cash aid is uh, is pretty high, uh, yeah. considering that there is a draft and that we're asking them to supplement it with additional information, including task three, which is which is the majority of the, the additional work, and they actually have hours in their budget to write that, as you just pointed out. So uh, we'll be negotiating with them with that what the final fee is to prepare the report for us. I think the option A, task A, is very important. The assessment is present quickly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would, would say no. I would Why? say no. Well, there's a lot of stuff in the uh, state that you keep in there. Well, but Mark? they're talking about us in particular, right? It goes back no, to the purpose probably. of this study. It, doesn't, it just doesn't address anything you know. Well, can I take I think it's a study that HDR would like somebody with the ACS to do it. But why wouldn't it be helpful for us to know what our carbon footprint is in terms of each of the things that we're going to? I mean, it makes a difference to me if something has a larger carbon footprint or not in terms of making the final decision about what we do. Maybe I misunderstand the carbon footprint. Um, I think I'm. I got one comment, two comments here from NJ, and that's one of them. She, she, she says, I'd very much like us to be able to use the carbon footprint model, which the language to teaching kids in school in terms of how to evaluate environmental impacts. Yeah. Her other comment was, our landfill in a regional context, is there so many other landfills out there in a region and their projected lifespan? So that's that's easily um, taken care of. But the, you know, the carbon footprint, they didn't even put a price on it. I think it's probably. Uh, not an inexpensive task. God, there's so many calculators online. Yeah. Though. I think it's something that the subcommittee might be able to work mm -hmm. on. This is a garbage in, garbage out thing, I think, quite That's literally. I understand. Yeah. Well, part of the I, and I, I understand the sensitivity to it. And if, it were, if accurate data could come at a reasonable price, I'd be interested in it. I, I suspect that it wasn't priced because we can't get good data at a reasonable price. Um, but isn't it all included in the um, 15,000? No. That's the way no. I read it. No. That's part of task 8. And that's A of task 8. No, it's well, optional. It's not price. They clarified that. Where? It's optional Based task 8. Last, last page. Ah. This cost to right. perform this sentence. effort has not the other part about that waste-based or wet-based survey and collection alternatives, mm -hmm. um, data that would be collected through that would be applied to this uh, carbon footprint analysis on the collection of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. how many people are driving their waste Mm -hmm. to the drop-off center, how many times per week do they go, mm -hmm. you know, right. what's your cost right. versus, you know, being a curbside, yeah. you know, a couple of trucks to drive yeah. around curbside across the town. You know, That's the different page. Yeah. 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 That's why you So I think, so... This is the only time this will have, of course. In terms of how much we're spending for them to redraft the draft. Yeah. Um, we good? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you, you were excited? Well, no, I just, I wanted, I was, um, I didn't have a page, so I was yeah. just seeing about this. And so what was, what were you just saying? I was reading it. <laughs> well, actually, I, I was sort of just summarizing we're all set, but I was kind of assuming that the, uh, carbon footprint thing wasn't going to be addressed. Right, which that doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean that you could address it in another But I think that any that of anything could be done independently of us. Mm -hmm. 
it's very important that that's an independent. I don't. I wouldn't pay fifteen thousand for it. I think that he was asking what they're talking about and seeing if there was a way to make that optional, depending upon the protocol or something like that. Would you say that if the so you're hoping that could be part of uh, the rationale for making a decision to expand? Like, let's say having a, a yeah, place yeah. had the lowest possible carbon footprint having a location here in town to dispose of waste, that'd be a good reason to go ahead with the expansion. It could be, yeah. But also, I got the impression, and again, mine's a little different than yours, that um, it would be, in terms of the whole cost, the different things that we're looking at, you know, the one, one through eight. Well, see, it's, it's listed as an optional. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. I get that now. But in looking at these different options, one through, that if we can get a sense of carbon footprint, what the co what it, what the estimate is, if that's what this is about, I just think that that might make a difference in my mind. For example, the carbon footprint to bring everything down to Springfield, how much is that going to, what is the effect of having trucks drive down to Springfield? That would be an example of something that might make a difference. I might say, wow, that's really creating a large carbon footprint. Let's keep the landfill open even though X, Y, and Z. You know, even though I'm hesitant about what the, the water issue or the fact of water, you know what I mean? So that's that's where I see it as playing a role. But I agree with you, I and mean, I think that that's significant. But I think in terms of all the priorities that we have, it's, it's much lower on in terms of all the points that we need with which to make a decision and that we that I would I would if it's going to be a huge cost item I would like to not see it be part of this particular project and that we see it, see it in terms of another project and, yeah. or, and or let the public ask us for that. I, I was involved oh. with the, um, the cities for climate protection uh, we did an emission uh, bring up the gas emissions inventory for the whole city and for the baseline of year 2000 and I know how much work that was. We had an intern working full time for 14 weeks. So it was a huge amount of data collection. But what I want to get to is we, in the whole greenhouse gas emissions pie, transportation was the largest and then they had, you know, the all the municipal activities, the buildings, and the fleets, and everything in the community. And waste was less than 1% of the greenhouse gas emissions. And the reason was that um, they, in, in the calculators, you know, the gas, the methane collection system at the landfill actually had a positive effect. And the, um, you know, the recycling and all the waste data went into there. So I'm just saying that, you know, carbon footprint, actually the, the waste has, it, it's a very small uh, part of, of the total that Northampton contributes. So really it's the mileage of the vehicles that are... Yeah, transportation. Amount of them. And yeah, uh, basically an exercise in evaluating demands on transportation, uh, both in terms of evaluating the way it would work is to, this uh, carbon footprint assessment would be applied to the options that we just went through. Right, that's right. right. So you're looking at uh, you know, the number of miles that people drive to get to the job lot currently to use it, how many times a week they come, versus you know, hauling everything to Springfield or to another site. Or curbside. Or cost or how much it would take to do that study. I think that we'll be looking at everything in that view in a few years. How about this? On the carbon footprint. So why not do this now when the film open? You know, it's really outrageous. So I don't want to do it, but if it's reasonable. Cost. How about if you take um, Karen's thought there and, and you say, all right, let's just focus on the carbon footprint of the mileage, the trucks. They could make some fairly uh, conservative assumptions and give us a mileage they, they give us some figure for each of the five options assuming that we, if, we, if we close everything it all goes to Springfield it's 21 miles to the uh, 
facilities be down there, round trip, blah, blah, blah. They, does that make any sense? But then we need to know what, what's the difference if the city picks it up versus what well, they can calculate. we all drop it off at a central place. They can calculate all that with mileage. Well, without they're going to say that we because we took out the survey that they won't have to do that. Well, it's the garbage in, garbage out thing. I might just say, the more the better information you have for the model, the more accurate it will be. You can probably do that, that type of study on a number of different levels, but depending on how accurate the information is, and they went through some type of um, some type of study on, on drop off usage, then that information will make the model more accurate. You can make a bunch of assumptions and throw it in the model and get some numbers out of it. it might not be as accurate. So it comes. Well, it seems to me to do uh, some simple assumptions and just they have a number to look at. If, if it's a factor of four, for example, to go to Springfield, yeah. are you saying that would be? I'm saying you have to, we are, I don't know what it means to do an assessment for a carbon footprint. I do know, however, that I think it's really important for us to make that a consideration in our decision. I think and I'm just, just um, you're talking about calculators. Um, there are calculators where you can you can determine exactly what, what your carbon footprint is for your waste generation. And I mean, if, and there are, are others that you know you just plug in some basic information and it comes out online. I mean, maybe they just need to give us calculators that people can use to evaluate. Well, this their own. You know, the, the whole sort of uh, generation of this, the discussion about this task came out of a number of different forms. I think we have some discussions here. I know in, in discussions with the Joint Committee, um, some of the counselors, I think Paul Spector was saying, geez, you know, we'd really like to know what the carbon footprint, these sort of environmental impacts or the options are. So the idea was to try to tie this type of analysis back to, to these specific options that, yeah. we, that we went through and not on, a, you know, not on a personal level or even from a waste uh, a waste management standpoint, the Telus Institute, the DPP report, does look at carbon footprint issues from waste technology, different types of waste management technologies, but that doesn't really help us because we're really talking about transportation. Can we get an amount, like at least how much they think it would cost us, given our revised thing, if they come back with 24000 maybe we say, no, that's way too much. But I can imagine we're going to need this eventually, and we're going to pay extra if we have to have somebody come in and do a totally separate report. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Things are going to change in that respect. I mean, we're not, we're not, you'd have to make an assumption in terms of where the waste is going to go as well. And we don't know. If we close our own land, we just, you know, we don't know where the waste is going to go. The other question is, is this community going to pay more for waste disposal in order to achieve a smaller carbon footprint? Is that what this community is going to do? Certainly, there are many people in the community that would do that very quite quite quickly. But I bet you there are a lot that wouldn't. Well, it looked. And so then, if you if if that's not, you know, I guess that's. I think it's going to turn to be the opposite. I believe it's going to be very clear that the lo smallest carbon footprint happens to coincide with the lowest cost. Well, that wouldn't surprise me because you pay for transportation by a state to generate a carbon footprint. So maybe they, you could be right. The lowest cost is uh, curbside pickup mm -hmm. and take it to a local landfill. Mm -hmm. And that's also the smallest carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody's going to believe you because you presume this. I mean, that's the thing. So that's this the to problem. me is, this is All the right. way for us, as long as we're doing a study rather than paying someone down the road. And I do think that things are going to change in terms of how we look at our changes. And this is going to be primarily based on carbon footprints. That's going to become something pretty much mandatory, I would expect, like they do in much of Europe. Um, and that we would just start to be in that curve. I, again, you know, it's really, we don't know how, what we're talking about here. We're talking about $5,000. Let's go for it. We're talking about $25,000. Yeah, I say $30,000. My, my, <laughs> my repairman, if I give him an amplifier that has a blown fuse, it's still 150 bucks. 
And he goes through, he's like, the, the fuse blew. Why did the fuse blow? And he's scratching his head and poking around and measuring things. And he'll spend as much time look, trying to figure out why it happened as he would to just fix something if it had happened, which is always frustrating to customers when I tell him it's X amount of money and all he really did was change the fuse. If we ask an engineer about this carbon footprint, they're going to, you know, practically be taking apart the engines and the vehicles, trying to figure out, now let's see, what's exactly the, let, let's analyze the exhaust fumes here. <laughs> and this community has a high to this, and therefore... So, so the only way we can do it is the garbage in, garbage out, I think, is to just get some sense in here of scale. And just let them make some, just make some assumptions, state the assumptions, and based on these assumptions, this is what the carbon footprint of the transportation piece might look like. I mean, would that, does that make sense to you? Mike? I mean, you, I'm think, saying because you're in this business. You're well, I've never fiddled with this, but I, I do think we need some kind of first cut and not an elaborate. But I don't, I don't know what a first cut means. Yeah. And I, I don't know what an engineer would be willing to do because at some point you put in so such a small amount of effort that it really is meaningless and then you can't produce that. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like we yeah. got to ask, ask what we can get for a reasonable price. Yeah, I can talk about that. Sure. So I'll go back based on my right. notes here and get a revised scope of the board and talk about the next board meeting. That, that simple cut at the first cut of that might at least give us a sense of scale. It could. Whatever the, de the whatever the exact name looks like, but there'd be twice as much of it if we do it this way compared to this way. And if, if that's the way it came out, then I'd be very happy with it. You know, yeah. If it's 20% apart, then what does it mean? Right. Okay. Yeah, that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We'll return. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Uh, I'll second it. All right.